question I have in my hair is going to be a lot of adjustments because he has always been a part. He never made and never made me feel, never made my sisters or my brother feel that um, I was the burden. We was a burden. He always treated us like we was a blessing. He loved me. He loved my kids. He he loved his grands. He loved his wife of 42 years. So this is going to take some adjusting, not having him here. Um, it was just like one day he was here. And then slowly but surely, you know, he left. I was there when he, at the hospital, when he took his last breath. And even that was an experience within itself. Um, it was, I've never, could, could, the only way I could describe his transition was as beautiful. You know, even in his transition, he was praising God, the oohs, the ahs. Of, I can only imagine what he what he saw and the life that he lived the only way I could say is that he deserved heaven you know he was a, a, a true man of God he did he deserved heaven and um I'm gonna really miss him I'm going to really really miss him um I went through some things And my father helped me on the level of being his daughter. And being a pastor. How do you separate the two? I went through some things in He was so wise and so gentle with how he handled the situations. Um, even in my marriage, you know, which ended in divorce. But the type of man my dad was, and the type of man he is, you know, me and my ex-husband, we have a wonderful relationship. And, you know, ultimately the, the, the divorce was our decision. It had nothing to do with, um, with my dad. It was just, it was our decision to divorce. But because of counseling because of the prayers you know my ex and I our relationship is good um when it comes down to our kids we love our kids we're there for our kids and and ultimately we still work together it's able to work together in ministry and I owe that all to all to my dad and God, God using him in, in his wisdom, I owe that, I owe that all to him. Um, no, he did not encourage divorce, but in my situation, I really felt 100% that I, I did not want to remain in, in my marriage. I, I did not. Um, and so... Even my, uh, me and my ex, we talk now about how much we miss him. You know, his wisdom, his love, his carefulness, and how he dealt with things. It, mm, the main thing that I'm going to miss is talking to him and hearing his voice. Like, I'm always, always calling him. I was going to see him and his last words to me was 
you know, it mattered to me how he viewed, viewed me getting a divorce. So it mattered. Um, his last words to me was, because my dad called me Cat. It was Cat, you know, I know you was really unhappy in your marriage. And God doesn't hate you because you act like this. And one day God is going to bless you with the man that he has for you. That's going to treat you the way you deserve to be treated. And that was his last words to me. That end, I said, I love you, Dad. <laughs> His response was, I love you more. And that was the last, like, real conversation that I had with my father. <laughs> I'm going to miss him so very much. And I do feel him. And I just dream about him. Um, and I feel that I feel his presence. I know that's hard to for some to comprehend, but I do believe that. I do. Um, I thank God for um, my mom. She's a strong woman. Very strong woman because she lost her mother in August of 2020. And then January, the end of this year, 2021, January 19, she lost her husband. And then that's not including other loss that she had. Within a five to six year period. We experienced some pretty hard loss, but even in the of losing of loved ones, we still trust God. Have lost our faith in God. She is now pastor, doing a wonderful, phenomenal work at Greater Fountain of Life. Um, but some things that have helped me. Because I don't want to veer off my, my blog, my my topic. <laughs> One of the things that helped me, I would say as a pastor's daughter. Um, one of the things that has helped me is to keep going. My dad would always say, don't let no grass grow under your feet. You know, and so I miss him. And I've gotten some phenomenal um, advice, one being, you know, there's nothing wrong with missing and cherishing the memories, but creating the memories, and I'm major with that, because Father says coming up, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'm 100% a daddy's girl, I am, 100% a daddy's girl, and Father says coming up. And so, you know, we have to figure out something to do because he's not here. Um, we'll be out of town, thankfully. And so, um, that's in the whole entire congregation. So that's going to be, that's going to, it's going to be an experience, you know, having to, to, to adjust to no longer celebrating Father's Day, celebrating his birthday. Holidays. Yay. <laughs> it's all going to be a challenge. And so, make no memories. Make no memories. Um, so, we started with that. And, and uh, when it comes to the church and ministry, we're keeping that going. Matter of fact, I have on this shirt and it says you better 
And the story behind that is um, we were um, having service and he was in the hospital. And it was um, January. It was, he passed away on the 19th, which was on a Tuesday. The 18th was a Monday. So that means the 17th was that Sunday. So that Sunday, we was having service, and my mom was at the hospital with him, and my sister Jackie was, you know, giving reports in regards to where we were in the service, and we had just finished Sunday school. And my sister says to my mom and my dad, you know, he was in the bed, didn't have any strength, wasn't really talking. Um, was in and out, to be honest, and she says, we're getting ready to have church. We're getting ready to start service, and we're getting ready to have church. And his response was, you better. As to say, do what we taught, do what I taught you. I'm in this hospital, but you already know. I don't want you sitting and crying and being sad and ministry not going forth and not doing kingdom work. You are a kingdom kid. So you, you better. So as far as the church, the church is booming. Power of God has never been so stronger. My only issue that I'm having as being a daddy's girl is missing my daddy. I would say it's administrative assistant. Um, his administrative assistant. And so I worked with him for years. Did all, anything that he needed done, I would do. Head praise team leader. <laughs> Open youth department. A missionary. So everything, I worked hand in hand with my dad. Hand in hand. You know, and, and the reason why I was able to go through a lot, trials, tribulations, persecution, regardless of what was coming, I, he was, God was in my life, but I had my dad right alongside me. And so, I would have to say that, if anything, you know, I didn't have my belief in my faith in God, but I am going to miss him because, you know, I'm a daddy's girl. Um, even in while he was sick, whatever he needed, he couldn't count on me. He would actually say, I can, daddy can always count on you. Not that he couldn't depend on my other sisters and brothers. I want to make that clear. But whatever it is he needed, we would make sure that he had whatever it was. He loved my cooking. He loved my grits. Because I take, he loved my grits. Okay. I, I actually know that I made good grits. He loves macaroni, macaroni and cheese. I know that I make good macaroni and cheese. I know that. And so he would he would tell me early in the mornings, hey cat, I need some grits. And with my grits, is um sometimes I would actually know to get up at five o'clock to start making them. Four or five o'clock start making them so they have enough time to simmer, you know, don't cook them fast. So they could actually do what it is that they need to do. Okay? Yes. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to really miss them. This is, this is the first part of it, is not being able to talk to him. Um, that I'm going to miss. This is just the first part. Um, it's. That's just, that's just the first part, not being able to talk to him. Um, it wasn't that I would go and talk to him and just tell him all my problems. I could really legit be going through some hard stuff. I mean, hard, 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 heavy stuff. And I would go to my dad. And he, I found out later on that it wasn't a secret. But I would go to him. And he would say, Cat, how you doing? I'm doing good, Daddy. I'm doing fine. I'm sorry. Swipe up. 
I'm not a good daddy. He said, really? Okay. But I go, well, how are you doing? But in November, he got me. I went over there, and I was going through some things. I had some things going on. I had some bills due. Like, I, I really was going through some things. And he said, Kat, how you doing? Like he normally do. And like I normally do. It's me not wanting to be this whining little girl to her daddy. I said, I'm doing good, daddy. How are you? It didn't work this time. He said, Kat, you never come and tell me what's going on. You put on this big, huge front. Like everything is fine. But daddy know that you've been going through some hard things. I cried so hard after I left the room, of course. After I left the house. On my way to work. I cried so hard. He said, but I want to let you know everything is going to be fine and daddy's going to save you some money today. He said, you always drop me if you think you're strong. You hold in a lot. He said, but today daddy's going to give you some money. That's not what I want. That's not, that's not why I, I talked to him. Although the financial blessing did help, but to know that to have a father that hears your silent cries, it's like God, but to have someone like that on the, in the earth realm that hears your silent cries without you having to go say, hey, look, this is what I'm going through. This is what's, this is what's happening. Look at me. To have someone that's like that. You know, I, I'm blessed to have had Bishop Dr. Percy Claude Days Junior as my dad. And he made it seem as if I was this glorious, wonderful person that had it together. The bragging he would do. And at times, I felt that I could not live up to his, the things he would say to people. Oh, she's a genius. I'm like, oh my God, daddy. They're gonna know I'm not a genius. <laughs> Even in my imperfections, He made it. <laughs> like that, you're second to none. When you realize that, things are going to go really good for you. You know, I'm starting to realize that. Good when people tell you that you're beautiful, you have it going on, you're smart, you're intelligent, you're a force to be reckoned with. But when you start seeing it for yourself that you're beautiful, 
you're wonderful. You're a force to be reckoned with. Then it's different. You carry yourself differently. You start demanding that. And once you realize that you deserve nothing less than for someone to love you unconditionally, to that you deserve the same love that you give out, then you start glowing differently, walking differently, talking differently. And a lot of people have been, I've been getting some people say, you're glowing. That's because I'm starting to realize that what my daddy was saying all along has started to manifest. I'm wonderful. That I'm beautiful. <laughs> you know, and um it took a while. I'm sorry, I was I'm outside in my car. It took a while for me to actually realize that. You know, so Thank you for listening to my rambling. Hopefully, I have, just by you hearing, you know, every journey is different. Everyone grieves differently. For me, grieving had been because it's been, let's see, January, February, March, April, May. It just turned June, so it's about to be five months um, in a couple of weeks. That for me, I wanted to make sure that I was not grieving in an unhealthy way. And so I saw mental health. Yes, I'm a huge advocate for mental health. I saw mental health. I talked to doctors. Um, getting the most and adequate amount of rest is very important in grieving. I'm not a doctor by any chance, but I do know when it's unhealthy, whenever you get to the point to where you stop eating, stop taking care of yourself, and you just cry, 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 cry. Don't get me wrong, that's part of the process, but you don't want to do anything. But just, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss my dad. There's no getting around that. I'm going to miss him. But I don't want to stop life. I will say the first day, Oh my goodness, that Wednesday morning, whew, that was the pits. Like, I didn't like the fact that the sun rose the next day and life continued. Like, how dare you continue? Life? Life stopped January 19th. How dare things go on? I cried, I cried, I cried. I threw myself on the stairs. I slid down the stairs and I went and got my coffee. I cried, you know, my coffee. Then I cried, I just cried all day. And that went on for a while. That went on for a little bit. But the, the fact 